Hey guys, it's Chris from George Shark. Today I'm going to go ahead and take a look at a home screen replacement that's completely open source. It's called EDW Launchers by Anderwebs. It allows you to fully customize your entire home screen experience, everywhere from the number of screens to themes to the actual app drawer itself. The, you know, different settings versus the, uh, the Galaxy S style or the standard scrolling up and down. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Alright, so let's go ahead and take a look at EDW Launcher. As you can see that, you know, I've personally just got three screens set up right here and at the top there's my indicator, my screen indicator, we'll get more into that later, and taskbar down here at the bottom, and widgets and live wallpaper, so overall it's really snappy as you can see. Uh, let's go over some of the features. You notice I got my taskbar down here, you know, I can have different items as I want, I just literally drop an item on my desktop and drag it into that. They don't have to be uh, gray like they are now, you can actually leave them colored, but I'll show you where I tinted them. <clears throat> I can grab my app tray and slide up and get a whole nother bar down here and slide that back down. You'll see, oh, you'll see that when I touch the app tray, you'll see the indicator. You see the little, the little dot going there? Asking me to slide it up if I want to. Right, next thing is, when I go in here, I currently have it set for six wide, which is pretty wide, but this is a really wide screen. Um, you can customize this as much as you want. and accidentally click on application. As it, yes, scrolling is very smooth, very nice. Uh, overall, this entire launch is very snappy. It's probably running a little slow right now, I just turned on my phone. But um, The next thing is, as I mentioned in the written review, is that this has swipe actions. So when I swipe up, my notification bar appears, and I swipe up again, disappears. So Now, for swiping down, it'll drive, drag down my notification bar. Another pretty cool feature. Um, swiping left and right obviously just does what it says. And again, notice the indicator up top. You can change the different indicators, but just to give you an idea, that's what indicator I'm using. Let's go into settings. You hit menu, and uh, oh, I'm sorry. Um, for me, it's going to be menu settings. Uh, it should be for you menu ADW settings, but uh, mine's in here because, as I said, this this launcher is actually incorporated into several different custom ROMs out there and in this case the CyanogenMod ROM that I'm running it's actually integrated right into it well let's get into it some more uh, screen preferences I have it by default hiding my status bar um, desktop screens you know you can go from anywhere from 1 to 7 uh, default screen which is when you finally launch your, your home desktop what screen it defaults to um, auto stretch has to do with making sure your widgets don't overlap if you have um, multiple columns um, on your actual desktop you can actually click that I can do eight wide whereas the standard is four which means that where you can normally fit four icons wide now you can fit up to eight it's up to you and same with rows you know I've got to set the part now but you can go all the way up to eight desktop scrolling speed and desktop overshoot um, I'm going to show you what overshoot is in case you don't understand that when I swipe to the left you'll see it bounce a little bit see how it bounced so, just that little bit of bounce. I don't have much on mine, but just that little bit, it's called overshoot. It's just to give it a nice feel so it's not, you know, snap, like really snappy, not in a, a fast way, but in an ugly way. This adds just a really nice feel and it bounces. Let's go back to settings. All right, drawer settings. Now, some of you may have seen the Galaxy S or even own the Galaxy S, and you know how it has a horizontal drawer where you swipe left and right. <clears throat> Mine currently is swiping up and down, but for a horizontal drawer, you would touch that, hit home, it's going to reload. There we go. And there we go. This gets faster as you use it. This is the first time, let's see, there you go. First time I've used the horizontal drawer. But, so, for those of you like that, you know, you have the pages up top, and you can even customize it. You can see right now I still got 6x4, I can have 6x5, 6x6, so on. And, you know, settings. So again, that was in drawers, you know, you could change the columns, you know, six and the rows, which is currently four, you can go with that all the way up to six. Animated drawer, which is pretty much what it sounds like. For people with uh, phones with maybe slower processor speeds and, you know, maybe not as much RAM, they might want to disable some of these cool effects. Therefore, you know, maybe it's a little bit faster on their device. Um, this phone has a one gigahertz processor, so I don't really have that issue, but you turn the animations off. Um, you can also change the zoom effect speed 
which is uh, when you first hit that, you see how all the icons zoom in. That was a pretty cool feature they first started uh, not too long ago. Um, show app labels and fade app labels. Fade app labels, again, is another thing. Uh, it's a cool animation to have, but you know, check, make sure that your phone runs pretty smoothly with it on. If not, you can turn it off. Background color, this is for the actual app drawer. If you notice, my app drawer has a, a gray color to it, but it's pretty opaque. So you can see that, oh, I didn't mean to grab that. You can see that you can still see through it, but it allows me to read the text better with having that, you know, that grayish area right there. So, drawer settings, and you can actually change the color. And this is where the alpha down here is, where you change the transparency, and then you can change the color just by moving your finger around. It's a pretty cool color wheel. Let's go to preview settings. There's not much in here. A lot of you are used to with uh, like the ACC Desire, with the sense previews where you pinch, and you can see it. And it's it's multiple, uh, like one here, one here, one here, one here. It's a nice little wheel, where it is. Let me just show you. Sense previews is turned on right now, so I pinch. You'll see they pop out like that. Whereas. settings, turn it off, and now they're like that, which is something that a lot of you may be used to already, so it's just, you know, what you like. I personally don't use it, it's just that's how it was set when I first installed it, but I never use this whole pinch. I find it easier just to swipe. I guess maybe if someone used all seven screens, but I personally don't. Settings, ADW launcher. Um, system prefer preferences, you have home button binding. Um, like right now, I have mine just moved to the default desktop, so if I'm already on my home screen and hit home, it just moves back to the center screen. But you can do different things, like even show the previews, open your app drawer, hide the status bar, or even just open an application straight from your home button. Um, you saw swipe down, swipe up. There's multiple other things that you can do. But I like it for swiping down to bring down my notification bar just because that's the natural means swiping up. Um, something I don't do too often, so it's not like I'll accidentally show and hide my status bar, but I don't want it there. It's there. Um, wallpaper hack. This is, I'm not quite sure exactly how this works, but you do, as it says right here, you do want to disable this if you get force closes using large wallpapers. Uh, it just enables the scrolling speed. Um, I have a feeling that it has something to do with maybe caching the live wallpaper or something. I'm not quite sure, but. I don't actually need to disable it, I haven't had an issue, so. Orientation sensor is exactly what it sounds like, you know, auto-rotate. So you can actually have auto-rotate turned on in your regular settings, and then app turned off. So your home screen will auto-rotate, but all your rest of your apps will. Um, screen cache, which it does exactly what it sounds like, it caches your screen. Um, I don't need to use this, I, I guess maybe because of the processor I have, but, you know, some people may. Um, scrollable widget support, um, I don't use scrollable widgets, um, so. Uh, there's, there's scroll board that was introduced a couple months ago, and it's pretty cool, but I personally don't use any of them. And uh, System Persistent. Um, th this is so that if Android is slowly maybe running out of memory or decides it wants to kill off something that you're not currently using, um, when it looks at your launcher, your launcher says, oh, no, 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 don't kill make. You know, I, I don't, I don't want to be killed off. So this allows your launcher to always stay running, so it makes it really quick to hit the home button and you, know, you go back to your launcher. Settings, EW launcher, and let's go to UI settings. Desktop dots. You notice that um, you know, I don't use my desktop dots, but everybody should know what they are. So the dots on the side, of the indicator, um, dock bar, which is you know the shortcuts on the bottom, as I said. Um, There's different ideas. There are different styles for closing the dock bar. You know, if you uh, after you launch an app from the dock bar, the dock bar automatically closes. So next time you hit home, you just see the regular. Um, the regular taskbar at the bottom. Um, left AB and right AB are the uh, action buttons, which are you know over here on the side, as you saw. And this is where I tinted them. So if I untint and hit the home, you'll see that now they're nice and colorful. So I liked the look of how they are untinted, or uh, as tinted versus untinted. So I'll leave mine tinted. So let's go ahead and tint that again. Um, this is a scaling size for action button icons, so just how big the icons are on this side. Um, you can actually hide the background film, so that's if I hide the all apps background, you'll see that centerpiece is now, you know, gone. 
And then for if I hide the oh the A B background or the A B hide A B B G background. But if I hide both of those and hit home, you'll see that now it's completely transparent at the bottom. Some people like this, I actually like having that little bar on the bottom. So that that's always been something that's pretty cool for me. Um, there's various different customizable elements of this and a lot of times you actually want to keep the, oh, I hit wallpaper. A lot of times you actually want to keep that there because of themes, which I'll show you right now. Um, I'll show you in a second. You can see that all this just has to do with the UI, the new icon selectors, the, you know, the highlight colors, um, show desktop indicator, indicator type. Um, let's get right to themes. It's pretty simple. You, you, know, you can use the themes icons, you can select the theme and you, you get click get themes, it just takes you straight to the market. Which is pretty simple. So there's plenty of themes in the market. I definitely suggest you download a few and check them out. But overall, you know, this launcher is definitely a very snappy launcher, a very fun launcher. And hopefully you guys can uh, try it out and support a very nice open source launcher. All right, guys. Well, that was ADW Launcher, again, by Andrew Webb. As you can see, it's really customizable. It allows you to take your home screen to a whole new level and make it truly unique to you. So I hope you guys enjoyed it and uh, let me know what you guys think of it.